Good morning. Welcome back. We had a slight hiatus. <laughs> we went AWOL on Good. our road trip. <laughs> Just one week. Yeah, one week away. I hope you didn't miss us too much. Well, we hope you did miss us. <laughs> and we are coming to you live from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, Peach State. We are, I haven't had any peaches yet. <laughs> you had a peach, though, in St. Augustine. I did. It was it was delicious. A free peach. Some I've, farmer's market gave it to you. I've actually seen a lot of peaches in the supermarkets here, but I've also seen a lot of figs, which I'm super excited to get some. We should get some later today. Because the last time I had figs was when I was in uh, California, I think, last year. If I'm going to eat figs, I just as well eat candy. <laughs> they, they, it, it does taste like candy. It's so delicious. It's the same thing. Super high in carbs. Like, let's just have some Swedish fish call it a day. But it has nutrients in it. <laughs> We've also seen quite a few donuts. More than I care to discuss. I should confess. I did a little breakdown of my breakfast over the course of a week <laughs> from last, I think, Thursday. And on five occasions, I had started the day with a donut, five out of seven days. One day, I had started with a stack of pancakes, and the other, I had a breakfast bagel. So, <laughs> life is good on the road. Life is good that, on that the road. That is my conclusion. What's that, been your favorite donut? So far? Oh, God. Do you know what? It's so tough, but those donuts at Sublime were Great. They were very buttery. Like, I've never tasted a donut quite like that. The peanut butter donut. The peanut butter donut, but the yeast donut loved it. itself was very buttery. You uh, described that very well in your little video. <laughs> well, I had ordered... So here's what happened. We get in line. Sometimes there's too many options. It's overwhelming. And... I'm actually very scared to go to this other place that somebody recommended where you create your own donut. That's Donkey Donuts? No, it's, uh, I forget what it's called now. It's a different one. Well, while we're still in town, we still have two more places to hit. Bon Glaze. And Don Donkey Donuts is not technically in town. And then there's that other one, which I can't remember the name of right now. And then we're also going to go to the Buttermilk House, I think it's called. Buttermilk Kitchen. The mm. Buttermilk Kitchen, grab some pancakes. But we were in line... At Sublime, probably about 20 options, and I, we were only going to do one that morning, because it's morning, and I got a Reese's Peanut Butter Donut. You ordered the... I think I ordered the... something caramel or, yes. or toffee? Butter toffee. Butter toffee. Because you wanted to share, but I don't enjoy butter toffee. I know. So I said no. So you said Oreos, and then I didn't want to. Sh I didn't want Oreos. So then, you we pay for our two donuts. You see my donut. <laughs> develop immediate donut envy. I had major food envy. And send your donut back. I did. And you, we had two Reese's peanut butter donuts. Yeah, and I'm glad I made that call, and that we got a more expensive donut for less. <laughs> well, so we nailed it. And D Dutch Monkey Donuts is the other place. All right, so we'll hit those two places up. We're in Atlanta, Georgia. We just had a great seminar last night at CrossFit Virus. We had a fun 4th of July. We checked out Revolution Donuts on 4th of July. Worked out after working out. Brutal workout at uh, CrossFit Identity where we did RJ. But I, I enjoyed that. That was harder than Murph though, right? I think so. I think it was just a lot of movement redundancy where in Murph, you know, if you're doing it in the in the way that you cycle through pull-ups, push-ups, squats, you, you know, it's taxing metabolically, but you don't ever kind of completely Fatigue, fail. Fatigue, yeah, you know, because you're partitioning the, the movements. So. And, you know, it was just a lot of running, you know, five rounds of 800 meter run, five rope climbs, 50 push-ups. So just, yeah, it was it was a different pain fest than Murph. But I felt it was a little bit harder. I'm glad we went in. Oh, yeah. It was super fun. And they, they had a barbecue set up afterwards, brisket. There was a scale on the table, which I loved. We're crashing here at my buddy Jordan's house. And I've known him since middle school. And hadn't seen him for a while. But he's now a vegan vegetarian, which we can dive into. But he's, he, yeah. he was a conditional vegan vegetarian. Because as soon as he saw that brisket, <laughs> he was like, hey, we staying here for breakfast? He was all over it. So, I think he had he had several 
I didn't have any. Things. You didn't let me have any. No. You took too long chatting. Well, people want to chat with me. <laughs> people enjoy chatting. The guy was giving me a tour. and Great box. Really yeah. very cool box. We'll be back there again. Then we were at Virus yesterday. We had a great workout before our seminar. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little challenging after eating chicken and biscuits, but finished it nonetheless. And then tonight we're at CrossFit Atlanta, like one of the original ever CrossFit affiliates, top 30. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It's one of the oh, first cool. boxes ever. So you... You've never been. I've been there quite a few times for seminars, but... Yeah. No, I've never been. But I'm excited, mainly, because we're finally going to meet Ellie Kelly from the tribe. Shout out to Ellie. Yeah. And Claire. I don't know, actually, if Claire's going to be there, too. But Ellie Kelly, my girl, I'm excited to meet her. She's been giving us the lowdown, the scoop on all the places we need to eat. Hopefully she brings her bookshelf, the first autographed oh, copy. We've sold yeah. so many books. I'm super, like, it's it's so hard for me to believe that I'm a published author. And we've got some other cool things in the works if you're listening. Roz has been hard at work on another sort of book. I don't want to give too much away, but it's going to be really awesome. And that should be out, what would you say, within a month or so? I hope so, yeah, yeah. You know how it is. It always takes a little bit longer, and especially being on the road. Speak with the publishers and whatnot. But I, I don't understand the the time frame for all of that stuff. But we've got our seminar tonight. We have a chill weekend. We're camping at Stone Mountain. Hmm. Ross says she's going to take me on a hike, which I don't necessarily love. But we you know, we went on a little bit of a hike yesterday. Yeah, really fun along the Beltline in Atlanta. So um, East Side Trail. Which goes down to, I think I'm saying this right, Ponce de Leon Market. But it was interesting, I was chatting with one of the guys last night at the seminar, and he was saying that that used to be like down there and towards Krog or Krog Market. Mm-hmm. It used to be just very, very unsafe. You couldn't even go there two years ago in the daytime. Well, it seemed pretty safe there. Oh, yeah, it was beautiful. I, I love that this new kind of this regeneration a lot of cities are doing. And uh, yeah, I. I'm really enjoying being in Atlanta. It's been a it's been a cool trip. You know, I was telling you, growing up in the states and specifically in New York, I was so accustomed to a city being Manhattan. Right. And so many cities in the states are more spread out than Manhattan. Manhattan is an island, and you get there, and it's like tower after tower, building after building, traffic, parking, all that stuff. We're here. It's like. We're in the city, then we're in the suburbs. We're in a city, we're in the suburbs. Yeah, there's lots of pockets and neighborhoods, and it's cool. You get these, you get these little different communities in, in each place, which is cool to see. And then after we camp out this weekend, we have a hectic schedule the next week or two. We, we, have, we have seminars Monday at CrossFit Midtown, Tuesday at CrossFit DFC, Wednesday at at CrossFit Identity. CrossFit Identity, they hooked us up. Yeah. We're going to show up there. And then Thursday, we drive to Kentucky. We have a seminar at Rich City CrossFit. So four in a row takes us to Kentucky. And then we have like a one day to chill out with our buddies, Ashley and Justin. And then that weekend, we have a meet and greet. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I'm excited. And our homegirl, Taylor, I is... Oh, hosting yeah. a seminar at her house. Is that on the weekend? That's that weekend, yeah. Wow, we have a pretty busy week, kind of. And then we'll probably set up a couple more seminars in Kentucky. For sure. And then um, off to Chicago. We've got a few seminars set up in Chicago that following week. And then the nice games the are right games. around the corner. Oh, my god! I'm telling you, it's July 6th before we this know it. crazy. I'll be on the competition floor judging uh, the athletes again. You'll be... Giving bro reps <laughs> to Lots the, of to bro Luchero. reps. Luchero didn't make it this year, but um, <laughs> I'll give bro reps to somebody. And then you'll be at the tent at the Natural Grip. You'll be walking around. You'll be hanging out. For sure. We'll, we'll get people to, to come see you, to hit a workout with you. It's my favorite part of the games, hanging out in the Vendor's Village. Doing Did. social media That's treasure right. hunts. That's right. <laughs> so. Eating free food samples. You know, so one of the topics we wanted to dive into today is we're staying with our buddy Jordan. And I've known Jordan, like I said, nearly 20 years. And um, one thing that became apparent once we got here is he knew nothing about nutrition. <laughs> and, I, you know, we say that in a loving way. He's one of those typical people that thinks they know about nutrition. He's eating, quote, unquote, healthy specifically that vegan and vegetarian life and when you dive into why he's doing it 
it's more so because his ex fiance encouraged him to do it. Yeah, and we don't know. There may have been some some other um, deciding factors and what kind of took him on that path too. But I think this, yeah, it's coming at a really timely uh, occasion that we happen to be here as well because we also had our Transformation Tuesday of the week. Abby, our your dear friend. My who, dear friend who's is, marrying us, our pastor. She is, and she's also a vegetarian and is having great success doing flexible eating and still being vegetarian. And not, I mean, what's tremendous about Abby's success isn't just her weight loss, you know, probably nearly 20 pounds at this point, but the fact that she is very aware that she's not perfect with it, Mm. but still doing it. And she's been traveling much like us basically since we've started. Yeah. I love that. I love, cause that's something that comes up a lot and that's, you know, without giving too much away, the whole mindset of it, this is what I've been working on in our next book coming out. But, um, but, but having that mindset that perfection is, is not necessary is so essential to being successful with this, um, long term, I, I think. And, and that's something I'm getting a lot of feedback from with, with people I've been talking to lately that they, they're really struggling with that. Well, I want to be perfect mindset. So, yeah, I I would encourage people to reach out to Abby. I'm sure she wouldn't mind chatting to some of you and uh, and also staying tuned for that that book we've got coming. Yeah, if you want to reach out to Abby, she's in the tribe as well. I think some people we've recommended the psychology video to have come back to us saying that it's been really beneficial and and helpful to them with that whole mindset. Well, I think what we do different than most nutrition companies out there is obviously. We kind of talked about it last week on, you know, social media as far as we're really a happiness brand. Yeah. Nutrition is what we do, but the foundation of what we're doing is trying to create happiness. And and I think that really has, you know, it takes on whatever meaning you want it to take on. But for so many people, it's that we've deprived ourselves of foods and now we don't have to. And a lot of that deprivation, you know, whether it's cookies, pizza, or meat comes from this self-imposed definition of health Mm -hmm. you know jordan's definition of health who we're staying with is well not eating meat is healthier than eating meat but you know and we can talk about jordan because i don't think he listens to this podcast (laughs) but when you look at jordan i would not say he looks healthy yeah i would agree with that statement he's 39 years old same age as me and again hopefully he's not listening but if you are jordan we love you, and we you know, obviously we've we've chatted with you. We we have a video that we'll put on YouTube about him be, being a vegan. But when I say he doesn't look healthy, what I say is, or what I mean is, he doesn't have much muscle tone on his body. Mm-hmm. He's your typical skinny fat person. You know, mm-hmm. he he looks skinny, but he also looks flabby. Mm-hmm. I would say, and I know you're laughing, but I mean I mean that in a, in a genuine way. He just doesn't look muscular. Yeah, he he looks almost frail. Yeah, no, I would agree with all of those statements. And, you know, he's not eating meat, therefore not getting any protein. And he believes, you know, people, there are people out there that well, I'm getting my protein. I'm eating spinach and broccoli. And this morning when he was sitting down eating breakfast and you were downstairs, I said, hey, you know, you had a bowl of cereal with strawberries on it and a glass of orange juice. And I said to him, you're not having any protein. And he said, well, there's strawberries. Oh, yeah. That was like his protein. Oh. And I was like, you know, I, I don't want to get into him before he heads off to work, but I think so many people, especially those vegetarians that are uneducated, think they're getting enough protein. And Roz just grabbed this little card that he showed us, and you can see where it has, you know, go ahead, give some examples. So this is, this is quite, quite useful. It's quite beneficial. It's a little card from PETA, actually. Um, that just highlights some plant-based uh, protein sources for vegetarians out there. Um, but for example, it's got broccoli, one large stalk, seven grams. Um, let's see, what else has it got on here? Soy chicken nuggets, four pieces, 14 grams. Soy yogurt, six grams in one container. Uh, soy milk, eight grams. Tofu, 10 grams. Uh, Let's see, veggie burger, 13 grams. 
So a lot of actually what I'm noticing here, a lot of these sources are are processed sources of vegetarian. Sauces or sources? I'm saying sources. Wait, what you say? <laughs> sources. So, yeah. Sources. All right. So no. did did you just notice that trend of all the? I mean, of, apart from broccoli, and of course there are some other plants mentioned on there, but but for you to get a significant amount of protein in in in, in any of the true plant-based sources, you need a significant quantity. Right, where, where it says like one cooked large stock of seven grams in broccoli, I don't know that I believe I it. I don't and, actually question that myself. Yeah. And B, it's like, well, cool, how many of those large stocks are you actually going to eat? You know, and then we don't even need to dive <laughs> into this. Let's look, there's 12 a things on things. here, and one, two, three, four of them are soy based yeah you know we can dive into the ill effects of soy on both a male and female body Mm -hmm. and i mean you kind of said this about jordan and we don't want to make it sound too negative but i mean he kind of looks like like some of those effects are taking place correct and we don't have to you know use your imagination but you're seeing it and Look, we're, we're pro-vegetarian and vegan like Abby. She's killing it. And like I said to you, Roz, the other day in our video, I would be plant-based if I could. Mm-hmm. Not if I could. That's a, that's a lame term. I could be. If I weren't lazy, it's easier to eat meat for me. You know, if I want to get my protein, it's easier to eat meat. But it's not impossible not to. Mm-hmm. But I'd probably have to eat some soy, which I don't want to do. Take more supplements, which I don't want to do. And you'd have to be a lot more mindful about how much fat you're consuming, you wouldn't be able to enjoy quite as many donuts because chances are if you're getting your protein sources, (laughs) I can't say that word right, (laughs) uh, from from plants or from uh, other things other than than meat, you're probably going to be having more carbs, more um, fat as well. So you just need to be super mindful and and you're not going to be able to enjoy as many treats as as you would be right now. Right, because, you know, it, it, to give Jordan some credit, since we've been here and basically hijacked his house, which is what we do while we're on the road. Yeah, you're, you're being warned, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Invite us in for a nice warm shower. We're going to stay for a week. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he's been very receptive, very open-minded. He started tracking yesterday, and today after I said that to him, he grabbed his peanut butter, and, he, you know, out of the jar, he took a big scoop of peanut butter. He's like, look, I'm getting some protein. Cool. Now, like you're saying, yeah, you also got a bunch of carbs and fat with it, mm-hmm. but I'm proud of him for trying to get some protein in. You know, and the big eye-opener, too, was he did keep track yesterday. While not perfect in his tracking, he noticed he only got 1,600 calories for the day. I would guess he got less based on what he actually plugged in because there was a lot of estimates going on. And I had told him, you know, I don't think you're getting more than 1,200. He said he's getting closer to 2,000, so kind of right in the middle, but 1,600 at 5'9", you know, and not that he's super active, but he, but, you know, but he moves around, he works out a couple times a week. That's not enough food. No, and that was not a typical day for him because we had dragged yeah. him off to Revolution Donuts the day before, and so he had a donut that he took to, to work with him yesterday. So that, that's and an additional 300 calories that he probably isn't typically consuming. True that, and I think he probably mindfully ate more which is you know always one of our first steps hey just start tracking Mm. because mindfully you'll make some changes for sure so you know we're interested in hearing more and we've got some other things in the works about a vegan and vegetarian lifestyle and and speaking of just getting started like at any point we were at cross with virus last night one of the women in the in the seminar wanda puts her hand up and says I downloaded your pamphlet a couple weeks ago, not having met us, not having watched anything, just simply figuring out her numbers. So if you come to our seminar, you get a packet that we've created. Yeah, correct. When you buy your ticket, you you get an email with a a handout download in there. And there's some useful information, but one of the things is our macro equation. Wanda downloaded it, and simply by looking at our formula, figuring out what she thought she should be eating, she's down three pounds. She said she's... PRing at the box, she has more energy, she sees a difference in her body, and she's eating substantially more. And not just eating more, she's eating carbs. She was so excited last night talking about french fries, but 
I saw her face as well when she was like, I can't believe I'm having this success in such a short space of time. This was in less than two weeks. She said she saw, she started seeing her energy skyrocket within the first week. And she was just so pumped to be able to eat carbs and enjoy food she loved. Like, it was crazy. I love seeing that ex like, excitement and expression that people have when they, they first realize how much better life is when you're eating the right amount of quantity of food, but also in the right balance and, and actually able to enjoy carbohydrates. Yeah. And not only that, she had been on vacation for a short time. Oh, yeah. And this is someone who's already previous to us lost a substantial amount of weight. So for 30 pounds or something, she said, right? Right. So for so many people, it's like, great, I lost weight. Now what? Mm. Well, now you need to make this a lifestyle. And, you know, being on quote unquote diets forever is no lifestyle. Absolutely. Then we found that at another seminar. Um, What's her name? Channing at uh, CrossFit Junkies who had been on so many different types of diets because she found that she would lose weight and then oh, yeah. she'd plateau. And so she needed to go on another diet to, or try something different to kind of get beyond this plateau and just couldn't get anything to work. And, you know, that's typically because you're not eating enough food. So this is, I'm just so excited that we're spreading the word about flexible eating and actually showing people that you're under eating and that your body needs more. And by eating more, you can improve your performance in the gym and just start feeling so much better in every aspect of your life. And I'm sure the people listening to this podcast are the believers. You know, they're part of our tribe. They, they're on the bandwagon. But you want to help your friends out, send them the video. You know, go on our website, buy a gift certificate for $24.99. Mm. You, know, you know, we're not here to necessarily self-promote on this podcast, but we're out here trying to spread the word. We're out here on the road trying to grow this, and we can't do it without people like you. So... You know, whether it's buying a gift certificate, sending them the book, all those, you know, sending them a ticket if we're in their area, for for twenty four ninety nine, you can change someone's life. You know, it's kind of like that old Sally Struthers, for 99 cents a day. <laughs> but it's true. It, yeah, I think, and I think, you know, the, there's nothing wrong with just getting more educated about nutrition, and you definitely will be. Two people came to our seminar last night who were expecting that to be a CrossFit class, and I managed to convince them to hang around because they would become informed about nutrition and, and we would give them something useful to take away so that they could actually benefit more from the work that they put in at the gym. And they were like, okay, I'm open to the idea, which was awesome. I just I love it when we meet open-minded people like that. And even Jordan, too. He's, he's fully taking on board everything we're saying, which I love. And I think that's the key takeaway is to just be open-minded, try something new. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, but at least you gave it a go and you educated yourself about, about something else and, and tried something new. I think it's cool. Well, nothing, nothing wrong with asking for help or gaining new knowledge. And, and I think a mantra and motto we've taken on along the way is if nothing changes, nothing changes. Absolutely. And when I say that to people at the seminar or you say, they kind of nod and it's like, yeah, you're sitting here you, you are welcome to leave here. You've paid us to be at this seminar, and you're welcome to leave and go right back to whatever it is you were doing. Mm -hmm. But that's not working for you. Exactly. And, you know, that's why I started. That's why you started, and that's why the thousands of people we work with have started, because it's not working. Make a change. You're not going to wake up obese. You're not going to wake up skinny either. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have to go through a process, take that time. But after weeks and months and slow success, you'll be convinced. And like we tell everyone, this is not unique to just a handful of people. This is working for the masses, and you are the masses. Mm -hmm. This is You're not that person that this doesn't work for. You're not a snowflake. You are not <laughs> special. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, cool. Well, I think... We wrapped everything up from the week. We did. We've, we've completely recapped our, you know, we've been on the road nearly a month. Isn't that crazy? And I will say, while I'm still missing my comfortable tempur bed <laughs> that I've What do you mean? That air mattress downstairs oh, is my goodness. amazing. It was like a sauna down there last it night. Was, it was a little hot last night. I'm super excited for us to be 
staying in the camp out this weekend though. The other day I went back in there to get something out and it was raining outside and the sound of the rain on the camper and being inside the there, it was so cozy. I'm I'm super excited to be in the woods and, and camping with you. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun and I'm excited for what's still to come after the games. We head to that northeast leg of the tour. Maine, Wait. all the way back down, and then... Um, we had someone asking yesterday, actually, are we going to be in Virginia at all? I don't even know what Yeah, is. so Virginia's on the way back down. So we're going to go from the games. I'd like to go up to Maine. So we hit that entire East Coast. So we'll go, like, Maine, Boston, New Hampshire, New York, you know, we'll stop at Albany. Albany, yeah. You know, and then we'll hit uh, Virginia, the Carolinas, maybe another stop in the Georgia area here. Cool. Down to Florida. Chill out for a month. we got the wedding. Oh, yeah. If anybody wants to uh, help me organize the wedding, please reach out. <laughs> I started having mild panic attacks last night as we were trying to go to sleep. Was after your post yesterday, less than four months to the wedding. Seriously, I'm, I'm starting to freak out a little bit. We need a DJ. We got Spotify. We need... <laughs> what will we use? One of your playlists? Yeah, I'll just make what, a what's playlist. It, what's your playlist? <laughs> You've got some funny ones on Spotify. We'll use a workout playlist. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that'll be it. And then, so big news too is after that, we're going to, you know, we're, we, you and I are trying to figure out the logistics, but I think we're going to try to continue on this tour for the winter. I'd love to. I'd love to go spend some time in... The mountains. Yeah, get if anybody some snowboarding in. You snowboard, I'll chill in the camper. But if anybody <laughs> if anybody lives on that west coast, midwest area, hit us up. You know, we're gonna potentially go like a three, four month leg with the dogs. So you want two crazy humans and two normal dogs crashing with you. Helping you with your nutrition. Helping you, yeah, helping you with your nutrition, you let us know. So cool. In the meantime, check us out. You know where to find us. Join the tribe. Check the website daily, ownyoureating.com, and hopefully we will see you at a box near you. Yeah. <laughs>